In the following video, I'm going to go through a couple of ways in which we can demonstrate uh, floor slab level deviation or deviation from a given datum. So I have uh, a point cloud here kindly donated to us by TrueLine Surveys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly show you how we can color the point cloud based on uh, its flatness. And then I'll go through the stage of actually extracting points and then kind of creating a contour plot. So if I want to show quickly uh, deviations in the floor flatness, what I'll do is I'm going to go to sections. I'm going to go to quick uh, Z. OK, and that's given me a section there. And what I'm going to do is if I just pop open the section view, and I'll drag that onto the screen. Now that section is currently at a, a, a random datum, probably the lowest in the, in the data set. Um, so I'm going to go snap to point and I'm going to say clip a point there, for instance. OK, and it goes to approximately six. So if I set that to six exactly, that gives me a nice datum to stick to. And over here in display mode, it's currently set to intensity. But below that, if I set that to section plane distance, it will then color the point cloud based on deviation from that surface. OK. And if I just change the original uh, display mode to say normal, okay, which basically just shows obviously the data um, doesn't have any RGB, it just has uh, intensity. What I'll do is if I just then turn off the section, you can you can see then data, okay, okay. So we've got our shaded floor plan at the moment, obviously, and I just need to expand the section shader. And I'm going to say, well, let's shade uh, instead of 20 mil, 10 mil increments. And I can move that over, stretch it out if needs be. So these are obviously deviations from six meters. OK, so wherever it's green, it's fundamentally the same as that, i.e. six. Wherever it's red, it's low. And wherever it's blue, it's higher. OK. And then I can uh, quickly go to Tools, I can go to Export Image, and if I just quickly say 8K, save, I'll just call this one Floor Flatness, Floor Flatness, I'm going to save it to an ECW, so it's nice and quick. And then it is finished now. And all I need to do is to just switch back to the model, and I can now view that image. Okay. If instead of an image you want to plot in plan, I can actually just spin it around like this. Uh, I can actually probably uh, drop the limit box down a bit so we can see the area which is actually included there. Let's go a bit lower. There we go. Okay, and then I can just leave that on the screen there and then I can just quickly go to tools and do a screenshot and that will then include this as well in the screenshot. But let's say for argument's sake instead of that I actually want to create a contour plot of what's happening in terms of the ground levels. So we'll turn off the section plane distance, put that back to intensity. And I'm going to clear the section because I don't need it. And we'll go back to the tools, edit box, and I'm just going to drop the box down even further so that it has less work to do in a minute because it's less points to process. So I want to extract essentially the ground points, then I can actually create a DTM from those and then contours from there. Uh, I've already, under the groups, each of these groups represents a scan location. I've already created myself a floor slab group, which is currently empty. And I've actually already tidied up some of the noise. So I'm just going to turn that off. I just did that by lassoing it and uh, turning it off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to group by mesh. And I'm going to say original group any, obviously. So I haven't done anything yet. And yes, I want to put that into the floor slab. And let's go for um, general ground and <coughs> a meter uh, grid should be fine. 
Uh, let's, we've got quite dense data here, so let's only go, say, 50 mil from the lowest point. Uh, so that's it's going to actually create a surface, and that's the, basically the maximum length of the triangles, which, again, that should be fine. Yep, and we're going to show through the cloud and click Preview Mesh. Okay, so if I just untick show through mesh. So what we're looking at at the moment now is we're looking at a surface that is actually approximated uh, using the lowest levels. Okay, nothing's actually been recategorized yet. It's just giving us a preview of what the lowest surface looks like. Okay, uh, now what I need to do is I need to recategorize the data that's close to that. And at the moment, it's going to use a distance of 200 mil, which is going to be too much. We don't want that much data because that will start going up the walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making that, say, 0.025. OK. And under groups, I am going to set the last group, instead of saying use cloud, to say group color. And so we don't confuse it with the surface, we'll give it a, a magenta color. Okay, so when I hit classify, the data is going to be now anything that's vertically above that surface, plus or minus 25 mil, will be moved to that surface. So let's have a look. Okay. So, as you can see, pretty much everything has gone magenta because it's been moved into the floor slab group. If I just check that, so I'm going to just turn everything off and then just turn the floor slab back on. That would appear to have a pretty good representation of all the points on the floor. Okay, so I don't need to enlarge the 25 mil offset, I don't think. Okay, so right click and right click and I'm back to having a surface, or rather I'm back to having just the points that are on the ground. And if I put that back to intensity, there you go. All right. So what I need to do now is create a surface from that. So I'm going to go to Point Cloud I.O. And I'm going to start to by creating, say, a quarter of a meter grid, so it's nice and tight. And I'll only choose the lowest level, sorry, I'll interpolate the lowest level around that grid of 50 mil. So if there isn't a point exactly where it needs one, I'll go looking up to 50 mil for it. And align spacing so it's aligned to the origin zero zero shapefully cloud so we can see it. Remesh so we'll skin over some of the holes where the scan locations are. And that'll do us. So hit preview. Okay, so there's our preview surface. Okay, and it's obviously a little bit big at the moment, but that doesn't matter because what we'll do is we'll trim it down in a minute. So I'm going to say, yeah, create grid. And we'll call this one floor slab. And all I'm going to worry about is just making sure the diagonals are optimized so that they, they follow them off the root of the contours and just press OK. That gives me this model. So if I do that, First thing I'm going to do is put the image behind it and just trim out the areas where I don't need the data. So to do this, I'm going to use some tools that are actually in Designer. So I'm going to go to Points. I'm going to go to Delete by Rectangle. I'll take that section out. OK, and I'll keep doing this to tidy up the data. And you'll join me when I've finished tidying it up. Okay, so I've tidied up a lot of the areas that I don't need to plot contours in. So to see the contours, I'm going to go to the contour defaults. And I'm just going to remove the highlight, because I'm not worried about that for the time being. And I'm going to set the interval to, say, 5 mil. And let's have them in, say, blue, so you can see them in a solid line. Change the text to 0, so when I take them in a minute, they'll be broken. And that should be okay. So if I press OK, there we have all the contours. Now there's a, obviously a few places uh, where there are still contours I need to tidy up. So I'm just going to go back to points 
delete the five rectangle and we'll just tidy those up again. Okay, so I've had a go at digging out most of the spikes in the data. If I just turn off the back off using that, we can see there's still one or two, but fundamentally not too bad, I don't think. Um, just to remove a little bit of the spikiness uh, from the data, I'm going to go to the DTM menu and just select Smooth. Just does that. So that removes the, uh, the noise from the data to smoother deliverable. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the model. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to now um, create presentation quality contours and I'm going to shade them based on their deviation. But at the moment, you can see the Z value here is is um, basically original Z. So I need to move this data to a point where I can actually use the Z as a kind of positive negative to give me my deviation. Under the DTM settings, it tells me that here is my maximum and here is my minimum. So I've got between sort of 1.608 and 1.5 minus 1.56. So if I add about 1.58 to these values, I'll have a, a decent sort of positive negative switch, hopefully. So to do that, I'm going to go to raise and then to 1.58. Okay, and if I go to DTM, yeah, we've got some positives and some negatives. Okay, obviously if you knew what the exact datum was, you would offset it based on that value so that you'd be getting values you know, based on that data, but I don't have that, so I've had to do this instead. Uh, so I set the interval to, say, 5 mil, and I'm going to go to user scheme. So what I'm going to try and do now is design uh, a scheme whereby low is red and, say, high is green, or higher. So we go to intervals, add. So I'm going to say, so let's go between minus 0 0.028, because that's the lowest. And go to zero and go to 0 0.016 because that's the highest you can see there and what we'll say is anything yeah anything low negative is red and then we'll graduate to white and we will then go to green so we're going to go from negative 0 0.028 to zero to positive 0 0.16 and I'm just going to save that. I'll just call this one slab checks for the time being. Obviously, different slabs are different tolerances. But I'm just going to save that because I might need it later. Before I continue, however, I've actually realized that I need to change my interval um, because 0 0.005 or 5 mil isn't compatible with these. So these need to be a multiple of this number. So I need to set that to be 2 mil. So to see the results of that, I can obviously plot them in uh, the contour colors in a second, but I'm just going to see it in 3D first. So if I go to View, 3D View, there we go. I just previously set it to height shaded, and that's what we get. Okay, if I do it against a black background, it might look even more contrast. So what I'm going to do now is we're now going to render the contours with these values, with these colors. To do that, I'm going to go to Contours, go to Create. Uh, we're going to tick override quick, which means we'll turn these ones off because they're the quick draw contours. Shading colors to use the shading colors and set that to two. Otherwise, it won't work. Press OK. There we go. If I give myself a black background, we have the same. Um, drop my scale down to about 1 to 50. So when I annotate it, the text isn't too big. And if we just go by distance, uh, yep. Okay, so now each contour has been annotated. So that's doing it using the grid DTM. If I want solid shading, I could obviously go back to the 3D view and turn this into an image. I might as well just do that. So I'm going to go to Tools. I'm just going to go Quick 8K. And we'll call this one Floor Flatness Shaded. And save it to an ECW so it's nice and quick. What I'm also going to do whilst I'm here is I'm going to load the point cloud in and take an image of the point cloud with just the walls because we can use that later on 
so that when we create a shaded model in a normal DTM view, we can use that to show where the walls are and any obstructions and it's where these holes are. So if I load the point cloud in, okay, in that comes. So I'm going to hide my model data so I don't see that. I'm then going to adjust clipping box. So I'm going to turn all my groups on because I want to see the walls. And I'm going to drag the floor up and drag this top one down. So what I'm looking for is something like that. Turn off the noise. Okay. So that what we are what we'll end up with is a nice diagram of where the walls are. I turn off my edit box, it gives us that, and I can go back to the tools, export AK, just call this one walls for argument's sake. Now that's done, I'm going to go through the same process, but I'm going to do it with a DTM. I'm going to models, new, and I create a simplified version of the floor slab because I don't need all those triangles. I'm just dump, dump it down 25% of its previous values. You see why in a second. So you can see here's all the points. Obviously, a lot still, even though we've uh, reduced it down to a quarter of what it was before. So I'm going to untick markers, turn off the model. Don't need to see that. And under the contours, we'll go to contour defaults and set that the same. So I'll remove that. Set that to blue for argument's sake. Always use solid lines for these because there's loads of them. Zero. Which gives us that. Now if I go to the DTM, defaults, I'm going to go user scheme, 0.02. And if I click on load, you need slab checks. So, oops, let's set the info back to 1, 0.02. And if I turn on the shading, we have that. So, turn off the contours, don't necessarily need those. And I'll put the key down. So, under tools. So, I'm going to temporarily set the scale large because that helps create. Um, tables that are easier to read. So I set that to one, Let's make it nice and big, and let's go every five, no, every four. There we go, like this. Press OK and drop that down. There we are. That can go out to AutoCAD, um, but before I do that, I'm going to put the image behind it. And if we wanted the uh, contours instead, we can turn off the image, turn off the shading, and uh, contours, let's create, set that to two, so it's a multiple. There you go. You can turn the image back on. Obviously, I can annotate it as I did before, but to do that, I first need to drop my scale down to a sensible value, otherwise the contour annotation will be huge. There we go. That completes this demonstration.